Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you want to adjust the settings of the workbook for printing purposes, you can do that through the Page Setup dialog box. You can access this dialog box by clicking the Page Setup dialog box button that appears in the lower right corner of the Page Setup group on the Page Layout tab in the ribbon. The Page Setup dialog box allows you to make changes to your worksheet's printed layout. It consists of four tabs, Page, Margins, Header Footer, and Sheet, and you can click on any one of these tabs to set the corresponding attributes of the worksheet prior to printing. On the Page tab, you can change the orientation of the page from Portrait to Landscape by selecting the Desired Option button in the Orientation section. This is very useful for printing worksheets that are wide. In the Scaling section, you can set the amount of scaling of the text in the worksheet. You can increase it to make the printout more easily readable, or scale it down to fit more printed data on a page. You can select the Adjust To option, and then set a percentage in the text box to the right of that, which sets the percentage of the default size that the information should print. Now when you're adjusting the page breaks in the page break preview, what you're actually doing is adjusting this value, which can then set more data on a printable page. You can also select the Fit To option button, and then enter the number of pages across and down into the two spinner boxes that follow that option in the scaling section. Below the scaling section, you can use the Paper Size drop-down to select the size of paper to which you will be printing, and you can use the Print Quality drop-down to select a print quality in dots per inch. You can type a number into the First Page Number text box to set the first page to display that number as the starting point in the header or footer, assuming you have added page numbering when you're printing. On the Margins tab, you can set the print margins for your worksheet. So use the spinner arrows at the right of each margins text box to set the top, right, bottom, and left margin width in inches. You can also set how far in from the top or bottom edge the header and footer data will print by setting that value into the header and footer text boxes. You can also check the check boxes under the Center on Page section to center the worksheet data horizontally, vertically, or both. On the Header Footer tab, you will see the header and footer for your current worksheet. You can use the header and footer drop-down boxes to select from some pre-made standard heading information, or you can click either the custom header or custom footer buttons to create a custom header or footer into which you can type your own information. If you choose to create a custom header or a custom footer, then the header or footer dialog boxes will appear. Here you can click into either the left section, center section, or right section text boxes and type your header or footer information into those spaces provided. Excel also provides you with multiple buttons that allow you to insert pre-created fields of information into your headers and footers. They are Format Text, Insert Page Number, Insert Number of Pages, Insert Date, Insert Time, Insert File Path, Insert File Name, Insert Sheet Name, Insert Picture, and Format Picture. You can click any of these buttons to insert that type of information into the currently selected area in your custom header or footer. Note that you can also select text that you have typed into your custom header or footer and then you can click the Format Text button to modify the font and font size. You can also place images into the header and footer area. You can click the Insert Picture button and then use the Insert Picture dialog box that appears to select the image that you want to use. You can then use the Format Picture button to edit the properties of the selected image. 
Once you've set the appearance of your custom header or custom footer in either the header or footer dialog boxes, just click the OK button in order to return to the page setup dialog box. Notice that there are four checkboxes at the bottom of the header and footer tab. Different odd and even pages, different first page, scale with document, and align with page margins. If you want to print different header or footer information for odd and even pages, or for the first page, or for both, then check either or both checkboxes as required. You will then need to click either the custom header or the custom footer buttons to open the header or footer dialog boxes. Note that you will then have two or three tabs, depending upon your checkbox selections, for each unique header or footer that you will need to then create in your workbook. These work the same way that they did when you created only a single custom header or footer. You will simply need to click the tab of the custom header or footer that you want to set before you add the desired header or footer content. And once again, when you're finished, just click the OK button to return to the header footer tab in the page setup dialog box. The last two checkboxes on this tab simply allow you to scale the headers and footers along with the worksheet content if needed and align the headers and footers with the page margins that are specified in the margins tab. The sheet tab allows you to set additional worksheet options for printing. In the print area text box you can enter or select a cell range to print. You can click the collapse dialog box button at the right end of this text box to collapse the dialog box down to a single line. Then you can click and drag over the cells that you want to print to set them at the print area. Now you must, however, click the expand dialog box button at the right end of the text box to expand the dialog box again. And be careful when assigning a print area. Once set, it will always and forever print only that selected range of cells within the worksheet. So be sure that you delete the entry that you make into this text box before saving your worksheet. In the Print Titles section, you can set selected columns or rows to repeat at the left and top of each printed page. To do this, you would simply click the Collapse Dialog button at the right end of the Rows to Repeat at Top text box, and then click anywhere into the row that you want to repeat at the top of each printed page. When you're finished, you simply click the Expand Dialog Box button to expand the dialog box again. You do the same thing with the Columns to Repeat at Left button in order to set selected columns to repeat at the left of each printed page. In the Print section of the Sheet tab, you can check the checkboxes to print the Grid Lines, Black and White, Draft Quality, or Row and Column Headings. You can also change the display errors of cells that contain error cells by just using the Cell Error As dropdown and you can either print them as displayed, you can print them as blank, hyphens, or the NA symbol. This is useful if you're displaying, say, an average in a formula that does not have information to average yet. Normally you would see the divide by zero error message telling you that you can't divide by zero. You can change that display with this dropdown. Also, if you have comments that have been inserted into your spreadsheet, you can use the Comments drop-down to select how the comments should be printed in your worksheet, if printed at all. Finally, in the Page Order section, you can also set the print order of the worksheet pages to Over, then Down, or Down, then Over, for very large worksheets that have page breaks both horizontally and vertically. When you are finished setting your page setup options, Click the OK button at the bottom of the Page Setup dialog box to apply your page setup options. Also note the three buttons that appear at the bottom of each tab in the Page Setup dialog box. There's Print, Print Preview, and Options. You can click the Print Preview button to display a print preview view of how your worksheet will print with the current settings. In this view, you can click the Page Setup button to open the Page Setup dialog box again, where you can change the page settings as desired. Once you've finished using the Print Preview view, you can then close it to return to your Excel workbook. If you click the Print button, Excel will open the Print dialog box where you can specify settings that you want for the current print job. You can click the Options button 
to open the available print options that you can set for your currently selected printer. The options will change depending upon the make and model of printer selected. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.